Say hello to the people at home. Hi everybody, we're back. My name's Keith McGuire, Mark's behind the camera. And today we're gonna to do a waterfall in Oregon. I'm, uh, it's a photo I took while I was there a couple years ago and we're gonna kinda of get started. Mark will provide a shot of the image that I am working from. And uh, hopefully uh, we can conclude this quickly. Yeah, so in the description below is a link to the materials that Keith's using in today's video. Uh, everything from the paints to the brushes to the paper. Uh, feel free to use any of the links to purchase the stuff yourself from most of the major retailers. We make a small commission if uh, you do. Uh, if you don't, feel free to use it as a list to go get at your local art supply center. Uh, and like he said, there will also be a link down there to download his line drawing uh, so you can follow along with the actual piece. Uh, just don't sign R.K. McGuire to it when you're done. Unless you're selling it, and then send the money to me. Keith. Or your name's actually... Yeah, Keith McGuire. <laughs> at blah 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 anyway um i am going to start with a light blue gray background um let's start with the uh, rock face behind the bridge uh i am using uh the much paler colors first uh like with most watercolors you tend to uh, work from light to dark uh, there's always exceptions to every rule, but I think you'll see that you can get uh, a pretty good effect. Right now, this is the rock surface uh, behind the bridge. And I'm working lightly because the waterfall literally kind of creates a bit of a mist. Uh, in that back area so there's like two drops in this picture possibly three uh, but the top back one does cr produce quite a bit of a mist uh, in the air so I also added just a tiny bit of violet to this uh, uh, background color so ultramarine blue I used a little bit of indigo and a tiny bit of, uh, of uh, manganese violet, which is provided in a schminky kit, which is what I'm using. Okay, so as you can see, still fairly light. Now, did I wet the background first? No. Should I have? Uh, yeah, probably. I know. But if it's a small enough area and you know you can cover it quickly enough, just do it. You don't have to wet everything every single time. Okay? So right, right now, I am just adding a little more value here and there. Then I'm gonna come under the bridge now and get the little area back here. And this was an incredible trip, I have to admit. Uh, this was beautiful. Uh, it's also on a, like a two-lane road going up a mountain in which 300 million other people are doing the exact same thing. So um, basically <laughs> what we did was... Very spot. Well, yeah, extremely. Basically what we did is as we were rolling by very slowly because the traffic was just crazy, I was able to get out walk up, take my picture, several pictures actually, uh, enjoy the falls, and then walk back to the car before it had gone, what, 100 feet, you know? So uh, yeah, it was one of those kind of adventures. Anyway, so I have a light gray going for my background uh, for the rock face back there. Now the foreground, uh, the, the, the rock varies in color and changes. So I'm gonna go ahead now, I'm gonna do the foreground rocks. And basically, I am using a little bit, and, I'm, and these are all the lightest values I'm gonna be using. I'm using a, a little bit of the um, sepia and a tiny bit of the ultramarine blue. 
And I'm getting a, kind of a browner, like a brown gray, nothing too heavy. So once again, I'm going to just kind of possibly wet the surface this time for you. And I'm going to treat this a little, I'm going to treat this kind of like a, a fun sketch. So I'm not going to go all the way to the edges. I'm going to let it bleed away to nothing so that I'll have a light paper, you know, white paper off to the sides. So it'll look like uh, the image is kind of floating on my paper. And I know. But you didn't do it at the top. Well, this is not the, it's in the middle. Oh, oh the top and bottom, yes, I do do. I, uh, I <laughs> do do, whatever. Um, yes, we're very mature here. Yeah, <laughs> stop. He said do do. Yeah, I was, I was waiting, I was hoping. Um, all right. You went there before I did. I was yeah, I know. I, I laughed, didn't I? All right. Okay. So, like I said, I'm just going to let it kind of bleed off to the edge. I don't always hit every bit. I'd like to leave little light spots here and there. So, I'm going to kind of come around on the other side very quickly. So, were we going to share with them your actual photo? Yes, yeah, I want to, if, I'm hoping you can somehow pop it on the screen, or if not... I'll consider it. I kind of like that it's teased in the corner with the paper towel obstructing it, so... It, yes. They can be like, why does he keep looking at? Why won't you show me his finished picture? Yeah. No, I we will... The we, photo. we will do everything we can to, uh... uh Mark has asked me to be more responsible in my, uh... in my choices of uh, things we're going to do and to bring everything I'm supposed to bring when we do it. So hopefully this time I am prepared. Somebody's got to run this, run this operation. Crack the whip. Yep, it's not me. All right. So again, this was a combination, a very light combination of uh, sepia and ultramarine blue. As you can see, what I like to do while it's damp then, is I'll come in and I'll start kind of just pushing a little value here and there. Nothing too much yet. But I'm just kind of getting going. All right. Okay, so this is drying, this is drying. I'm able to keep going because I'm just hitting different areas. So Do me a favor? Yeah. The people love is when you spin the paper around. Yeah, wait, I'm gonna... Can you I, just spin that? No. Real I'm quick. trying to be... Just spin it. 180. <laughs> See how slowly I did that? <laughs> I'm trying to be... I'm trying to listen to uh, comments that have been posted and uh, we do know that if you're on a little uh, I... what? I I, I anything. iPad or your iPhone, it's not so bad. When you got a big old TV in front of you doing this, people have claimed to have fallen off their chairs uh, when I start spinning the paper around. So I'm trying to be better about that too. Anyway, uh, while these two uh, sections are drying, I am going to now uh, do the water down below uh, the falls. I recommend wearing VR glasses when you watch yeah. these paint. So it's 3D. Like it'll, be, it'll be cool. <laughs> All right. So. Sorry, I interrupted the colors you were picking again. No, this is uh, just indigo. Um, and I don't have any other foreground color going on. Uh, in the photograph, there's actually some shrubbery. And I'm like, eh, I don't want to do it. So I'm just going to go with the water. Um, if you'll notice. I Wait, you're veering from the original photo? N no. Wait, I'm so confused. No, I'm, I'm just... I'm, uh, I don't know what to I'm do. just shrubbing. I'm taking care of some shrubbery. I'm eliminating some shrubbery. I mean, why do you even have a picture if you're just going to go you off and color whatever you want? Wait. Is that doesn't look like it's fading at the left or the right white uh, oh there he goes Look, trying to save it yeah the other side 
Okay. All right. So I leave a kind of the a white ring to make it look like it's splashing down into beautiful water. I left a little bit of an edge here, but it will get eliminated once everything kind of dries. All right. And I'm gonna just kind of pull some of this back here around behind the waterfall. And, all right, that looks pretty good. Now, watercolors, uh, for anybody that hasn't seen me work before, um, just want to remind everybody, the watercolors do dry about 40% lighter than um, when you apply it. And the other thing about watercolors is, honestly, they look great going on wet. I mean, everything looks good in a watercolor when it's wet. The trick is waiting for it to dry and seeing the effects. The only way you're going to learn that is by doing. Learning what your colors look like after they've dried. So these are all parts of learning watercolors. So, um, you know, just remember that if you're putting it on real light, believe me, it's going to get a lot lighter. So 40%. So, all right. I kind of like that. And he's measured, so he yeah. knows. No, I, I believe uh, I believe I read that in a book. Books. Who does books. that? Books. Technical. All right. So uh, at this point, this is still damp. This is still damp. Um, I'm not sure. I guess I could go up a little bit into more of the cliff um, and get a little more of the uh, kind of the ferns and uh, lighter colors that go up to the bigger trees. Uh, on the on the rock surface here. So I am going to start uh, with a probably a combination of uh, yellow ochre and I'm going to use a little bit of uh, Naples yellow. Now Naples yellow has uh, is a, a bit opaque, okay? But I almost want that kind of creaminess um, to help cover the cover the ground here um, so I'm gonna oops I'm gonna grab these two colors out I'm gonna start applying all right How's my hair? Uh, it's missing bandana. Oh, yeah, that's kind of what I'm realizing myself. Is it full? We, we need to get you some custom printed ones with your logo on it. Uh, my logo should have been a pirate. Should have been, but you're not. You had to play it safe. Yeah, whatever. People like birds. No, no, they don't. They like turtles. They're delicious. Mm. As I tell my kids. Students, they are delicious. All right, so as you can see, I'm just kind of bringing the this, uh, as Mark would say, dead vegetation color in into the image. Yep. He loves it. It's not a Keith McGuire. If it ain't something, ain't dead. It, yeah, it's got to have some dead vegetation in it, or it just ain't real. He's adding vegetation. Notice I didn't say that. Yeah. Um, I just said something dead. Yeah. Well. Keith, this painting's so colorful and vibrant. Did you see the squirrel behind the tree? Yeah, the dead squirrel. All right, I've got it. I think we're good. I'm coming up. So now, after this color, I am going to apply a wee bit of, this is called May Green in the, in the Schminky set, but honestly, it's quite close to a permanent green light if you're looking you know for a standard color because um, I don't think may green is uh, a, a standard color in the in the big book of paint so I also mix that with 
um, a little bit of the Naples yellow again just to um, kind of opaque it up a little bit. Now you'll notice that I'm applying these colors right over the wet areas that I had worked on the uh, the yellow, the dead stuff um, before. And I'm letting it just kind of bleed out a little bit. It gives it a soft edge. It's not a hard, no, no hard lines here. It's just kind of blending out a little bit. Now it's not too wet, so it's not gonna completely uh, blend away if I, if that's what you're afraid of. But like I said, just a little bit at a time. Now this side um, I think has dried up quite a bit, so I'm not gonna get that effect over here. You mind stopping creaking? Am I what? <laughs> so, you mind stop creaking? Oh yeah, sorry. Something about this chair or my weight, either one. Um, all right, so squeak. <laughs> um, <laughs> now that I've, I've called it out, everybody yeah. that's watching will be like, I didn't even notice before. Yeah. Now, now it's <laughs> now it's annoying. Yep. All right, that's my goal. So I'm gonna keep. I'm going to keep applying color to the to this vegetation area. Um, I'm going to add. Uh, this is called a uh, Venetian Venetian red. You have to forgive him, folks. He hasn't painted in a while. Yeah. All the paint colors. We're back. I know. You know the reddy color. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start now adding just a. A bit of this Venetian red. I also mixed it with a little bit of the yellow ochre just so it'll be more of a golden brown rather than a real red brown. We're just softly applying these colors. We will eventually create a little detail once we get enough of the color in. We'll start bringing out some of the the rock face and some of the uh, vegetation, so it doesn't look like just big pretty big pretty areas. All right. Yeah, we hate for your paint to turn out pretty. Yeah. Well, that's why we got to get some dead stuff in here to make it all worthwhile. All right. Um, Goth painting with Keith McGuire. Na, 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 yeah. na, 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 More dead stuff. All right. I am now coming up under my trees along the cliff face. And I am... Have applied a combination of uh, chrome green and... Uh, and indigo. Not too dark. As you can see, I'm applying it... Um, dry and then I'm gonna kind of bleed some of the color over. This is gonna be a, a wee bit of a shadow color underneath my trees. And I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of blue here. So what I'm trying to do, as you can see, I kind of dibby dab it around. I'm trying to make it look like boughs of trees and leaves and that kind of thing. So take a bow right here. Okay, good. I think that looks pretty good, according to me, yeah. Keith McGuire. All right. Um, and now I'm going to come around this side. I'm going to do the same thing. So this is kind of like the shadow bottom of the branches and trees that we're going to be doing above this. Again, I'm going to take the water. I'm just going to kind of soften this up over here. Trying not to hit the bridge. Because basically, it's kind of silver, I believe. Um, we're going to leave it white, basically, so that it'll pop out of the scene. 
But I've got a silver sharpie you can use. Yeah. I'll make a pot. No mixed media. Only if you tell them. Old school. I hate gimmicks. I think uh, my students know this. A lot of them do anyway. Um, there's a lot of gim crackery out there. I don't, I'm not a not a fan. Though I have to admit, some of the some of the markers and stuff they've got nowadays, I am impressed. All right. All right, we got uh, shadowing. We're slowly bringing up the vegetation to the actual trees that are around the uh, around the um, uh, waterfalls itself. I am going to, however, I'm going to let that dry up. I'm going to come back down here because it feels pretty dry. I'm just going to kind of break this uh, rock up a little bit so that it has uh, you know a little bit of texture to it, so it looks like rock. For one. So now, once again, I'm grabbing my uh, sepia and I'm grabbing more sepia. I guess I should use water. All right. I'm using a little bit of the, uh, uh, what is that? Brown. No. Sepia. Sepia and. Ultramarine. Thank you. Yes. And that's why I need somebody here. All right. So I'm going to come around behind the falls a little bit here and we're going to darken this area. For one, I'm sure it's getting wet, so it's going to be darker. And as it gets near the fall, or to, uh, as it gets near the water in the, you know, at, at, in the falls here, uh, it will get very dark. So right now I'm just kind of set myself up with a shade of gray there. I'm going to grab some indigo, a little ultramarine blue, and I'm going to add quite a bit of the uh, sepia to that, okay? And I'm going to get a fairly dark blue gray. I'm just going to go right along the edge of this, uh, the falls here. And I'll let that gray just kind of bleed out. All right, slowly I turn. Yeah. And I'm just gonna, this time, I just made a sharp edge. I don't know why you just didn't switch and paint with the other hand. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, would that be scary. <laughs> Just practice. Whoa, right. don't slow it down, buddy. I know, I know. All right, good. So that time, I don't know if you noticed, what I did was I just created a kind of a hard edge there. No, I was too busy with my head in the toilet because... Oh, come on now. <laughs> Be nice. No, I, um, I put a hard, dark edge there, and then I just took the water and bled it off. So... Now we've got it. Good. All right, let's take a pause real quick. I need to reset the Okay, well, camera. I'll tell you what. I kind of need to let this kind of dry up anyway, so we'll be back in a minute. All right, I'm back. All right, hey. Uh, paper's it's been, headed. It's paper's, been so long. Yeah. I'm going to just keep interrupting you. No, wait. Because it's I'm, funny. Yep. Sit up. Yep. Sit it. All right. I am back. It's dry. Uh, we were... Doing a little bit of work down below here. We're gonna keep going. So I'm gonna take a uh, little bit of our indigo mixture and add a little burnt sienna to it. Mm, burnt sienna. To get some a uh, little bit of this uh, brown. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of like cracking it a little bit. So I'm, I'm creating these lines, but. They're not gonna stay, because I'm gonna take and I'm gonna start wetting them up, just kind of softening them up a little bit. So blend some of it away, leave some of it as hard line. And so as you can see, I end up with some um, 
kind of cracks in the uh, surface. So I'm just going to do a little bit more of this. I'm, I am going to darken this area a little bit more where the uh, water meets the side of the cliff here because like I said it's fairly dark in there. But as I come out we want it to lighten up a little bit. So Mark was telling me that the first uh, chunk of that first segment was about 30 minutes and it is kind of hard you know waiting for things to dry it does take a little bit of time to get things uh, moving on a watercolor I have to admit it's it surprises me how, how much time it takes to get things done everybody thinks watercolors you just whip them out Mm -hmm. I've seen them on the internet. They do them in like five minutes. You know what? That's not what watercolors. That's some mutant. Uh, no, I have no idea. I'm trying to find some excuse. Um, but, you know, you can do very simple, quick uh, watercolors. Washy, little, um, you know, one shot, one color. Um, uh, let's say one layer uh, pieces. Uh... I think it will be one of our lessons one time. We're going to do some pen and ink and watercolor or, you know, uh, whatever you call them, the Sigma pens now. They're basically waterproof uh, pens. Wait, isn't that mixed media? Yeah, no, it's, uh, yes, kind of, but it's uh, uh, kind of like a way to journal, uh, do some journal art. And it's a lot of fun. So you go, you sketch, you ink it, and then you color it like a coloring book. There's no other way of kind of saying that. And, it, and it's, it's, it's fun. Can we just stop this painting now and just start that? No. <laughs> By God, we're finishing this one now. That sounds like fun. Yeah. It is fun, actually. And uh, it's a great way to kind of record your uh, vacation. Um, instead of uh, photos, you get out your your paintings and bore your friends with those, you know? <laughs> so, no, I've seen some. They like it at first, though. Yeah. Oh, they, it's so creative. Yes, exactly. So, yeah, my first three days of vacation, I made four paintings. <laughs> but, yeah, you can't show them. That's the nice thing, too, is they don't have to look at probably 300 uh, shots of your vacation. Maybe just a couple, you know? But it is, it is a great way to spend some time. Great for the friends and family. So I would hoped someday that I'd be able to do that with my son. The non-artist. That's the first thing he told me. I don't like art. I'll remember that. In my will. You didn't tell him baking the art? Well, no, he surprised me and announced he was going to be a chef, and I burst into tears. Because finally, finally, he was doing something uh, what I thought was very artistic. Um, he's doing very well now. He's a heck of a baker at this point. All right. So as you can see... I'm I would leaving. never know you don't bring samples. Little facets. Yeah, I know. <laughs> hey, I don't ever see him either. What are you talking about? He's a successful baker that we never see. Mm -hmm. um, I tease him enough. It just uh, it, It's not enough. It doesn't work. As you can see, I leave facets in the, to give it the appearance of rock, you know? It, it, it's... I do these fine lines again. And then I just kind of break them up a little bit. Use a little bit of water. A lot of times what I'm doing is I'm wetting one side of the line. So it keeps the... Uh, it keeps a sharp edge on one side and blends away on the other side. 
Now, if you try to be consistent, that sharp edge will be on the same side of all the cracks? Or nope. Does it matter? Nope. Because, yeah, the, you know, rock has a lot of different uh, surfaces, turns and uh, cracks and peels. and So, no, it, I, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Or at least not on this one. <laughs> Maybe I should qualify that. Um, it's no exception to any rule. Yeah, wait, no, there's an exception to every rule. But yeah, on this one, no, it shouldn't matter. So, oops, I went off to the edge, didn't I? Oh well, after I said I wasn't gonna do that. You need to move the whole painting that way just a little bit. Okay. That's good. Right you're there? Just, yeah, you're just getting a little far off. Okay. So, I'm gonna come back over here now. Just switch hands. No. No. Now, as you can see... Keith's not really left-handed. We mirror the entire... Yeah, video. exactly. I just want to be cool. I want to be a lefty. I am just kind of dragging my brush down. This is a little technique that I like doing for rock, too. Is I'll just drag my brush with a little bit of paint using the side of the brush, not the tip at all. I'll just kind of drag it down a little bit and let it skip off the surface of the paper. And you get this kind of texture going. And then what I like to do then is drop a little bit of water into some of these surfaces. And what it does is, is it pushes the paint up along the edges of the um, of the areas that you you know that you added paint to and you get these wonderful little hard lines that form the um, form your cracks and crevices in your rock okay so at this point, I'm going to start making a few areas uh, a little bit darker. I'm probably going to start adding a little more. I'm going to vary the color a little bit of this too, just so it looks a little more um, interesting. Because there's nothing like grays and browns to amaze everyone. So I like uh, adding a little bit of violet. You know, I'm having a hard time envisioning hmm. is the rainbow you're going to put in later. No rainbows. So one thing, I teach a lot of kids classes. That's a, we want to do rainbows. No. But it's a waterfall. There's always a rainbow. Yeah, the they're so hard to do. They are such a pain in the butt. Mm. And I, I've watched uh, people just absolutely ruin things. You know, they, they do an amazing picture. Now I'll put the rainbow in. Ah, yeah, okay, good luck with that. I feel bad. I warn them too. No, you don't want to do that. Yes, I do. Anyway, all right, so I've added a little uh, of the violet on that side. I'm gonna add a little more on this side. There's my goal. Uh-oh. I want you to paint a cardinal with a rainbow. Uh-oh. I dribbled into my waterfall. Huh. You only have paper towel right in front Oh, of here's some. <laughs> Thank God. I just want to lift that dribble out. All right. So. So do you attest the fact that you could lift that dribble out successfully to the type of paper you're using? Um... Mm, no, I think more to the fact that I got to it quick enough, actually. Um, yeah, you get a little bit of, there is a little bit of time, unless it's a horribly staining color. And there are some that are like that. Um, no, just get, get it, get it quick. However, had it um, kind of set or made a stain, you can go in and with arches, you can go in and kind of rub it out, scrub it out. You can use a Mr. Clean uh, scrubby pad. Not a sponsor. Um, I wish. I've always liked Mr. Clean. He was all right. Um, 
He was the first guy I knew with your rings. Yeah, that's true. And I thought he was a sailor, but I'm not sure, you know? He was Mr. Clean and Mr. T. Mm. Mr. and Mrs. T, Bloody Mary Mix, buy it or I'll kill you. <laughs> I always like that. All right. All right, so we got some nice rocky surface. And I want to move on. Oh, thank goodness. Hey, shut up. You're supposed to be support. Oh, support. Oh, support. Oh, support. He's tipping. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Supporting me in my fearful. Oh, I'm supporting you, unfortunately. <laughs> you are buying lunch today, right? Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> the best part about working with starving artists, they'll yeah. work for food. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> I love food. And they're not good at math because it probably costs them more in gas than it's going to cost me to feed them. Yeah, you'd be surprised. All right, so let's take a break on the bottom there. And uh, we're going to go ahead and start uh, working our way up. Now, remember what I said about this being uh, kind of misty over here. So as I bring my kind of cracks and textures into this uh, top part, you'll notice that I'm not going to get too dark. And I am going to keep it light uh, near the waterfall, uh, near the water itself, because it is literally, create, you know, throwing up a fine mist. Now, as we get a little farther away from it, not a problem. And I don't know if you notice, I am using not too much paint, but also not, I'm not, I don't want a lot of browns or grays. I want it to be a little more of the uh, purpley uh, values in the, in the rock surface up here. So, so once again, I'm just kind of adding facets to the rock. And I'll eventually probably come back and put one, like, final coat over everything to kind of meld it all together. But right now, I'm just, I'm still working on creating a little bit of shadow here and there in the rock surface. Again, I don't want to get too, too dark along the edge of the... Sorry? Now watch this. See this? I'm going to just take my brush. I'm just going to gently scrub what I have done just so that it doesn't look like there's a hard line near that chunk of water. I am going to need some color around it, just because. Just so we can get the water to stand out a little bit. So I'm adding a little bit of the ultramarine blue back into my background there. Back at my background, trying to figure out. All right. Oh. All right. So, when are we ever going to have detail, Mr. McGuire? Uh, eventually. This video has to get 10,000 likes before he'll put detail in. No. 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 It'll take 10,000 likes before I get finished. Is that probably closer to the truth? Probably. One day, I'll sneak to Keith's place and I'll show you the reservoir of unfinished paint in his bed. <laughs> nice. I actually uh, was kind of going through that this weekend, going, mm, I think my lesson's been learned here, 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 and here. So I do believe... I can let some of this stuff go. 
I was telling my students to just this last week, uh, you know, it doesn't hurt to do something a couple times, you know, try to try to get a lesson or two out of something. And uh, you might not succeed, but you really should try to finish, no matter what. Because then you can look and go, okay, this is where I made my mistakes. This is what I did wrong. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. I mean, it happens. See if you can fix them. A lot of times we see things that most people don't. It's like, why didn't, why, what's wrong with, you know, they don't see it. Just enjoy the process. The learning process. If you want to do this for a living, then you can worry. All right, so now we're getting there. I'm going to take, and I'm looking down here. I'm going to take, and I'm going to just softly scrub some of this surface. I'm just using water, but I'm kind of lifting the paint that's there a little bit. I'm just kind of blending things together now. All I did was take a little bit of water and soften some of these edges. All right. Very good. All right, now, so I've got a little bit of the background. What I need to do is kind of anchor this together. I'm going to use, I'm going to start doing some trees. Uh, tree, yeah, trees. Uh, this will help. The vegetation is going to be a little bolder. It's going to make a little more uh, a color statement here. Because right now everything's kind of pretty pale and gray. <laughs> so, let us begin. I'm going to start with... Um, Again, I'm going to use a little bit of yellow ochre, a little bit of the may green. And then I am going to add Oh, I'm not sure which one is which. I'm going to look. Uh, that looks like a turquoise. And that is the one I'm looking for. All right. So I'm going to add, now this is Schminky Cerulean Blue, okay? Now, very honestly, Schminky Cerulean Blue is much closer to, I think, Thalo Blue and a lot of other product lines, okay? Um, for one, it does not have any of the texture of a, of a, um, of an actual cerulean so I'm just saying I think it's a lot closer to a phthalo blue uh, than than a cerulean there I said it I know mind blown and it is kind of a when I deal with people with other brands uh, you know they're painting with other brands they you know, I say use this cerulean, uh, well, with this condition or that condition, this being said or that being said, just because, uh, you know, not all these companies match up exactly color-wise. They use different pigments. Some of them, uh, I believe uh, Schminkies is one of them, is trying very hard not to use... Um, dangerous chemicals anymore like uh, magnesium and uh, you know cadmium that kind of thing um, they are concerned about artists that put their brushes in their mouth um, bad habit don't do it yeah they always tease me because I point my brush usually I'll use the I'll use my mouth to point my brush and my Students all scream. What are you? You stupid! What are you? What are you doing? I say, look, I'm fine. There's nothing wrong. 
And then they go, yeah, how come you're so short? Nice. Thanks. At your age, your hair shouldn't be that long. It's yeah, not natural. Or, yeah, or or quite that gray, being only 27 and all. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, anyway, I'm just, um, I'm not exactly, I am kind of like wetting the paper, but very lightly as I go up the sides of the cliff here with these trees. And I'm just adding um, kind of like base base color down. I'm not trying to make them look exactly like trees or anything. I'm just trying to get the some of the color in. Sort of like what I did down here, which will eventually become grasses and mosses. And there's a tiny hair. Dang. Off. Yeah, you think I got it. I didn't. There. That time I did. All right. So. Well, I'm going to say a word. Uh -oh. oh. All right. How's our time? Uh, we got oh, about six more minutes before I have to stop and reset the camera. Down. Okay. So I'm using brighter yellows and greens right now because I have every intention of dulling them down a little bit with uh, the shadow shadow greens that will be coming in later. Uh, so if you're wondering, wow, he sure makes bright and pretty trees. Yes, yes, he does. Yes, he does. But they won't stay that way, by God. All right. See, I kind of like the bright colors, kind of contrast from the grayish down below. Yeah, well, I'm, I won't be killing it all. I mean, you know how I like dead things and all, but... I don't know. And once you stick the rainbow one, it'd be very bright and colorful. Yeah. As I recall, recrawl, hey, I talk funny. As I recall, it was pouring rain too when we when we did this. No, you were at a waterfall. It's called mist. Yeah. No, it was pouring rain. It was, it was, it was, and yet the place was still just absolutely packed with people. Only they were prepared. They all had umbrellas and all kinds of wonderful equipment. Whenever you finish up this, we'll have to take a quick pause. Okay. All right, so I've gotten some of my lighter, baser uh, yellow greens, greens in there for my trees. And when we come back, I will begin a new, trying to turn them into trees instead of green blobby things. All right. We're back. We'll be back. All right. Hey, um, we're going to start fill, filling in some detail now. Uh, get this thing to come together. Yay! Yeah. Detail! Yeah. We love detail. Anyway, um, first things first, uh, I'm going to go after the trees uh, in the uh, along the top here. So we're going to start uh, kind of defining them a little bit better. Uh, right now, I am grabbing a little bit of chrome green and uh, this is a very opaque, it's got a lot of minerals in it. I'm adding a, just a, a touch of the yellow ochre just to kind of 
yellow, uh, yellow it up a little bit. It's more of a blue or green. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start creating, um, I'm going to start breaking up the branches to the trees and creating a little bit of separation between some of the branches, creating a little bit of shadow, um, that kind of thing to help make the tree a little bit uh, more like a tree. <laughs> there you go. So, um, like anything, like everything, uh, trees have surfaces, they have branches, and there's like a light side and a dark side to, a, uh, to, the, to the branch. And that's what I'm doing. That's how we kind of break it up so it looks, um, you know, like it has a bunch of branches rather than, you know, a big ball that, you know, kids draw the ball with a big stick. I love those trees. Well, I'll tell you what. There is one tree that is like that in this universe um, called a mango. <laughs> I swear to God, uh, when I lived in Hawaii... We had two huge mango trees at the end of the block where I lived, and you'd look up the hill, and it's like, oh my God, it was just like a little kid's uh, uh, drawing of uh, of a tree. And they are so dense and so round. <laughs> it was very cool. Now, I don't know if all mango trees are like that, but um, and I don't know if these were wild mangoes. I don't know if there's such a thing as a wild mango, uh, but they were amazing. And I saw plenty, plenty of them around. Um, so as you can see, I'm, it's not exactly outlining, but you are, you're kind of breaking up one set of branches from the other, you know, leaving some light. Now the trees are pretty far back. I'm just kind of, I do little dots and dabs to kind of break up the make it look like uh, you know leaves as best I can like clumps of leaves rather than just you know individual leaves we're gonna have to oil the oil the uh, chair here. I've tried. It doesn't work. Really? Yeah, I just got to get a new chair. Or if you'd like to send me a new chair, or, or, uh, Keith's or, uh, address is in the description. Right. Or a lighter, or a lighter artist. I'm just going to get you some uh, milk crates to sit on next time. <sighs> Be just like at home. <laughs> Just like the rest of my furniture. All right, so as you can see, what I do is I start creating, you know, little darker areas here and there so that we have some light values and dark values. And you don't have to use... Uh, you know, all green or anything. I like to go in and I'll I'll dab a little blue here and there, just to kind of break up the color a little bit, so it isn't all just green, 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 green. Gosh. Yep. You know, I didn't notice it until you mentioned it. I know. And now, <laughs> now it's all I can hear. Right? All the comments will be like, go back into that dark room you yeah. shot before, or at least the chairs weren't squeaky. You know, we could have got that chair. Or could we? That chair used to be up here. It was only because you had to sit on something when you painted that it got well, brought downstairs. Makes things, it's easier to sit. Bob Ross never sat. You know, 
Bob Ross didn't have to work flat at a table. And I think he had a stool. No. <laughs> you know, I was doing a, I was pulling a Trump. Uh-oh, don't go there. Fake news. Fake news. All right. So, as you can see, I'm slowly but surely. And he did know. Yeah. Pulling these trees, uh, making these trees kind of the branches to separate, to have light and dark branches. Now this area under here that's kind of light gray, that was going to be my gray green, that was going to be my, uh, my shadows for my trees. Came out very light now compared to the green I put in. So I'm going to go back in and hit this just a little bit harder. I'm trying to work a little bit faster. As Mark mentioned, lunch. No food for you till you're done. Yeah, no, I'm working on it. And we're done. All right. <laughs> Another amazing half finished mm -hmm. Keith McGuire. Put it under the bed. Yep. We're going to frame this one. Under the bed. And then under the bed, yes. All right. Squeak. Squeak. So, I don't know if you notice, at this time what I'm doing is I kind of go back around. I'm just kind of softening up all those little dots. And you don't want to knock them completely away. just want to kind of take them down a little. Wow. Like I said, I really did not notice this chair until... Probably shifted. What did he say? I hope he said shifted. All right, as you can see, I've gone with a little deeper color underneath the um, underneath these trees. I'm now adding a little bit of uh, uh, ultramarine blue. I don't know why I can't keep that color in my head. I use it a lot. All right. So, only in the deeper, darker sections of this clump of trees. All right. So where's the rainbow going? Um, it'll be right over he here. Is that my hand in the... Oh, man. Is that still in the shot? Uh, har, har. All right. So again, oops. Coming in with just a little bit of... That cerulean blue, just so the blues aren't going to be all the same either. As you can see, I'm just creating little, a few little dots in a row, and, and I'll take and I'll kind of blend it down a little bit. All right. Now the other thing is I want some really 
kind of dark areas in here also. So a watercolor should have a lot of a lot of value. So you want it from very light to very dark. So I drop the water in. Again, what I'm doing is creating kind of hard edges here and there. And doing just a little bit of blending. I actually have to hold this up for a second so I can see what I'm doing. All right, a lot of times I can, uh, I'll pick it up to actually move the paint around, but that wasn't my reason. I'm getting a, a wee bit of a shine that I can't quite see what I'm doing. Hmm. So. That help? Oh, no, no, don't, don't, yeah, don't change anything. Um, I can also get up. All right. Go on. Yeah. So even within branches, you know, clumps of branches, there'll be, you know, light and dark areas in, in, in the branches themselves too. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now. So I'm just going back in and um, just changing the value here and there on these uh, lighter clumps. You can do it on the darker ones too, but I'm just adding a little bit of a little bit of color just to break them up so they're not just little blobs of color but actually slightly three-dimensional hopefully and like I said that they can apply to the medium values too all right let's uh, get away from there I'm gonna come into this area down beneath the bridge here where it's a little bit darker I'm just gonna create a little bit more shadow under here under the bridge itself this area happens to be uh, kind of shadowed a little bit by the the vegetation and the stuff that's around the the falls itself. I think you're just avoiding that bridge. You don't want to paint the bridge. Oh no, the bridge is easy. Bridge will pop right out. I know I've said that before, but but yeah, right now I'm just trying to get a get this area a little bit of color in here, deepen up the color. Like I said, there's a little bit of shadow in that section there. And cool, all right. Now, squeak. I'm gonna get some color around the second tier now of the waterfall. Again, I'm using some of my deeper colors. And basically, I'm kind of creating vegetation via negative painting. So I'm painting the dark areas 
As you can see, the vege vegetation pops out from there. No, we can't see your head's blocking. Is it? Yeah. Is it now? Nope. Now? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Mm. All right. Please address any complaints to Keith at rkmcguire.com. Yeah. I try to warn them. Okay, so. Okay, I want to lift a little bit of that color right there. That's better. And what I'm going to do... Wait, I'm not going to do it yet. Hang on. I'm going to um, do the other side now. I just want to... Kind of get a little bit of value on both sides of the falls. Then I'll show you how to make the water. Now there is a lot of kind of dark, dark, dark green moss in here too. And I'm not sure, I might add a little bit of color. It's a little. I'll let it bleed out a little, very softly. I just want to get that little bit of shadow on both sides of the falls so that I can now show you how to do I, how I do the water. So I'm going to take some ultramarine blue. I think that's all I'm going to use. I think another variation could be um, Prussian blue too. I think either one yeah, I think either one would work well. So, both together will work perfect. Um, what I'm going to do is very gently, I'm going to do some fine light lines here. What I'm going to do now is soften this with my brush. Oh, so soft. Yep, very. Now, right here, I don't want to. I want to create like a, almost like a, a lip, not a lisp. That's something entirely different. Ah! Rule of thumb. Don't put your thumb in the paint? Yeah, don't, don't put your whole hand in the paint either. All right, so as you can see, I've added a little bit of water, a little bit of blue towards the base here. Leave the top white, white. You can have these fine lines that'll come dribbling down. I'm doing them in light blue right now. Then I'm going to do it again, do it again at the bottom. Basically, it's not one big steady flow. It's a lot of dribbles and spray and rock hitting water, or water hitting rock rather. So it kind of breaks funny here and there. But this kind of will help represent. Not too blue. Leave, leave white. Okay. Okay. So the idea after this will be, we will have some of the surface behind it.
show through. So some of the dribbles will, will actually see behind the, the rock itself, behind the water. And we don't And it's kind of fun because this is sometimes a, just an absolute flood, a torrent. This one, it was going. It wasn't going that hard. So, so you just want to get a little bit of that surface shown behind the, behind the falls. Okay, now he's starting to pop out a little better. So I gotta let that dry. Can't do it all at once. It's much hard as I try. I have not figured out how to do that yet. So I'm gonna have to reset in a minute. Okay. So this is gonna be more than one session, I take it. Um, I don't know, did you do extra intros that I missed? What? Huh? Oh no. It'll be one long <laughs> video. Really? Maybe we could. So grab your popcorn, boys and girls. Well, wait, wait, wait. And sit could, down for the long haul. Could we break it now? No. No. We'd never do that. Why not? Because it would be an hour and a half video and then a 15 minute finishing video. Mm. Oh boy, that's not good. No, I don't think it would be that. Hmm. hmm. Interesting point. So here's the thing. No matter how long I think it takes me to do it. Times it by 10? Yeah, I'm starting to believe that. Finish those few leaves. All right, go ahead. Um, again, we, we're going to take a short break. You'll barely notice, um, and we'll be back. All right, I'm back. Uh, I am um, going to attempt, uh, going to attempt to uh, put the bridge in, just so we can kind of see it. Uh, that kind of always helps uh, move a painting along. Um, all I'm doing is it's again negative painting. We're just gonna kind of fill in around the around the bridge. So this brush is a little different. This is called a uh, uh, a floral brush. As you can see it has a very interesting tip. Um, comes to a very fine point. And that's why I use it. I love the I love the fact that it I can get it that fine a line. Except for today. I don't know if my hands are shaking or possibly I need to remove my glasses. So ooh, that helps. Sometimes I know it's a little hard to see what is going on before it's painted. So here comes the big reveal. The 
this is basically just uh, I'm using just indigo just using it as a dark create the dark shadow of the un under the bridge for one I feel you don't have to have insane amounts of detail, especially on something this small, but you know, it doesn't hurt if you can hold a good line. So I'm very gently kind of outlining a little bit of the girders and stuff. I promise next week we won't have this chair. Because wow. Now, between the lines, I'm just going to very softly kind of blend that in just a little bit. But I'm not done. I'm just getting that set up. So i got to wait a little bit on that. In the meantime, I'm going to come back around. I'm going to keep hitting, uh, developing my trees. And hmm. so I like to kind of go in a direction with the with the branches when I do them. So it isn't just me willy-nilly uh, just putting dots down, but rather I'm actually trying to... Boy, this tip is being... I think I bent it. <laughs> yeah, I did. But what I try to do is kind of go in the direction when I can of the, the branch itself, the leaves, everything. Might have to try another brush here because this guy's being very weird. So. Nope. All right, let's try this one. Okay, look away. There we go. Yeah. That has a good tip on it. So we'll get back at it here. As you can see, I, I kind of go and try to follow a direction. I'll just come in and I'll leave some of it hard, hard line, and some of it I'll just soften up.
like I said, don't be afraid to get some some darks into this picture. So like I said, I took this trip uh, about a year and a half ago, and quite honestly, I had an incredible um, uh, tour guide who took us to all the prettiest and most incredible places. Um, she's the uh, daughter-in-law of a good friend of mine, uh, Teresa Steinmetz. And we went to the coast, we went up the mountains, we went everywhere. And uh, you could tell she was very proud of where they lived and she lived there for quite a while. And uh, it is a absolutely gorgeous state. Uh, they're outside of Portland. And um, they weren't kidding when they said keep Portland weird. Um, They are truly, truly crazy people there, but very friendly, very, very nice. Yeah, here we go. So like I said, once you start, you know, you got to start bringing some of this value into the picture. If you don't get the darks in, then things don't, you know, things don't pop. So that's what's happening now is I'm starting to apply a little bit of the shadow now to the to the painting itself. You'll notice a lot of times when I'm doing detail or smaller detail, I tend to do it. I do the, I'll drop it in dry brush. I'll drop it in, you know, won't wet the paper, but later I will come in and wet the paper over top of what I've done. So, all right. So at this point, I gotta come back and I'm gonna start working this ground down to the waterfall itself. There we go. And a lot of times I will drop water into what I'm working on so that I can lift. Sometimes I'll lift a little of the color up too. All right.
So I'm doing a, this is a little bit of the, um, the green with a little, and actually a lot of, <laughs> not a little, a lot of the indigo. So like I said, I am trying to create some shadowed areas. And now I'm gonna come back over on this side. and try to do the same thing. I have this nice big bright area here. I love that. That's going to be, uh, that's basically old vegetation and, and ferns and such. But I do need some uh, value on this side also. I didn't have anyone to talk to. Oh no. Yeah, I had to talk to I had to talk to the audience and I told them all the horrible things about you. Um, they're all true? Yeah, probably. Everything anyone's ever said about me is true. He's uh he's not ashamed of it. And now it's finished. No, just kidding. Um Mark's a failure. I'm yeah. a failure. No, Mark. I have one job and it failed at it. No, he, he, we had a camera um, decide it was going to stop. And uh, fortunately, we didn't miss anything. So we're back. Um, I'm going to try to wrap this up because uh, Mark says I'm using too many megabytes. So uh, very quickly, uh, I am going to kind of get the cliff face shadows in under my vegetation, under my um, my ferns and dead dead things. <laughs> There's got to be a term for that. Ferns and dead things. So what I'm going to do, what I'm doing is I'm kind of breaking up the, the edge of this with some dark. And that's going to become our shadow underneath our um, our vegetation. So just give me a second here. I've, you don't want to wait too long after you do this. You get it down. I got a lot of paint on there, and then I pull it. I'm pulling it down. Hurry! I am faster. Oh, we're out of megabytes. Game's over. <laughs> so Sorry. as as you can see. Or they can't because we're on Megabyte. No, oh, no, I was going to say, wait, is my head in the way again? Yes. Fat head in the way again? Constantly. Get a haircut. Hippie bum. I'll have you people know that I am doing this long hair thing out of what? Immaturity? Uh, second childhood? Uh, yeah, just kind of looking to regain your youth. Yep. That's what it is. I am young at heart. I am uh, I'm the hippie I never was. Oh, if I only had a picture of you when you were like 12 to throw up on the screen right now. Oh, God. <laughs> you had a crew cut, right? You were yeah, like basically. Those... Yeah, my dad, every time he'd get mad, he'd uh, shave our heads, you know, just to anger my mother. Um, Boy, that he, was... sure taught, he sure taught her a lot. Yeah, God, I was so... <laughs> I remember the one time my brother uh, Victor came around the corner and me and Kevin are up on the up on the uh, uh, up on the porch there where he would shave our heads and uh, I just I saw him and he, he backs up quietly and he goes back around the corner I'm like you bum so anyway he got out of it that time just a single tear runs down your cheek oh god yes anyway it's sad. My, my father passed away, and uh, now I can talk about him. Um, it's great therapy. <laughs> I don't need no help. I, I can sit and complain about my dad all day long. Anyway. Getting there. So 
So, I have to admit... Shred lightly. No, no, I have to admit that um, this is taking a wee bit longer than I thought it was gonna. But I'm, I can honestly say uh, uh, I'm out of practice. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Not like I don't paint at home or anything. I don't believe you paint at home. But shut up. I do. I've got a show coming. <laughs> yeah, it's a rumor. It's only a rumor. It's a rumor. Oh, rumor. Boy. No, I do have a show coming up. I want to see it. Yep. As soon as it's uh, ready to go. It was real sad when the day you pick is going to be the one day I'm already booked because I've cleared off so many other days. <laughs> All right, so I've postponed a few times. Just a few. Almost double digits. All right. What? No. This is the same one from 1997, right? Oh, oh, <laughs> oh you're counting last year. Oh, yeah. Well, that was another. The shows that never arrive. Yeah, the show that never arrives. We're actually going to film it. There, put you to work now. Of course, then he's going to charge me. Mm-hmm. But I got to give the well, let the people at home watch their show if they can't make it into town. What? No, I want them to come. Well, yeah, if they're able to have fun. Anyway, if you pick a date, they could you know, <laughs> book their plane tickets and stuff. Yes, yes, yes. I don't know how many of our viewers can just jump on a plane on a whim. Well, honestly. Um, I don't know how many of my friends can actually jump on a plane on a whim. But no, I've been uh, promising a show for uh, a little while, and I keep uh, putting it off because I'm not happy with uh, everything I got. So, I'm changing my format a little bit so I can enjoy the show a little bit more, and that's what's kind of taken so long, among 10,000 other things. All right, so. So. So what? I am, I'm working on it. So I'm coming down. I'm not gonna say I'm coming down to the wire here, but I am kinda getting down to where we can almost call it quits. I would probably play with this a little bit more, but due to the constraint of time, I may have to uh, I may have to just kind of let this one go this week. All right, so little of the dangly brown vegetation there. I'm going to add a little bit of color. So I've added um, the Prussian blue and a little bit of the violet. It's a manganese violet again, uh, just to kind of get a little bit of a shadow on that one side, but not a boring shadow, something with a little harumph, 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 a little fun to it. All right. So. I'm coming back on top real quick. I've got a little ultramarine blue, a tiny bit of the um, indigo. I just want to kind of go above the bridge a little bit. I'm adding a little more value right in this area so that I can bring the, make the bridge kind of pop out a little bit more. 
which it is doing. Okay. We'll blend that in and tiny, tiny, tiny bit of indigo. Fine line, hopefully. I'm just going to make these little tiny little thin lines that kind of represent the rails. This ain't exactly like the bridge, but I think it's too small a painting to get that crazy accurate. other thing I would do at this point is now to take the indigo and kind of go under the waterfall and deepen this value. Oh, fine. I'm waiting. Waiting for that deeper value. I know. Sometimes Sometimes you just gotta get her done. Right. I'm falling. Whoa, where are you going? <laughs> I almost fell out of the chair. <laughs> um, our usual filming site, we are uh, we have carpet and the chair doesn't move uh, too much. And in here, we are hardwood bound. All right, so at this point, I would like to say I'm almost finished. I'm adding just, again, a tiny bit more value to the rock surface in the back, adding also a little bit of purple down here so that it kind of reflects what's above it, too because I do have uh, some violet back there. Um, I just want to grab the other side of the waterfall here. And put a couple little lines in here just to make it look like it's water too. Again, you don't want to, don't overdo it. And you just got to get a little bit of a little bit of color in there a few little stripes swoosh it's a watercolor it's a waterfall I'm sorry it is water never mind all right so mr. mark do we have why do you gotta make it weird yeah I know uh mr. mark what do you think do you have anything to say while I'm just putting on tiny touches tiny touches um well, if you've happened to make it this long in the video, uh, uh, we really, really, really... Whoa, stop the spinning! Okay. Jeez. Sorry. Um, we really appreciate it if you give the video a thumbs up, give it a like, give it a share, uh, show it to your friends, show it to your enemies. Nice! Just kind of want to get the word out there. Um, we are back. If you're curious on the materials that Keith uses, his personal picks, there's a link in the description of the video. Takes you to Keith's website. Browse around, but uh, you know it has a list of the Schminky brand paints, the Arches watercolor paper, or paper. Yep. I'm falling asleep over here. I can't even talk. Nice. The uh, watercolor paper, the Lowell Cornell brushes that he's using today, as well as a few odds and ends like the butcher tray, masking tape, all those kind of fun things. Um, if you use any of the links, we get a small, small, small commission. Thank you. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything extra, uh, but we appreciate it, and it helps us make these videos. And if uh, you want to just use it as a checklist to go buy at your local art supply center, by all means, go ahead and do that too. 
Uh, we always like to support our local businesses and it doesn't matter where your local business is. That's how they stay afloat. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, uh, ideas for future videos, always put those in the comments below. Uh, we try to read and respond to as many as possible. Uh, if we didn't get to yours, we didn't do it on purpose. So. I was going to say, at the very least, we do read them. Um, sometimes uh, they hurt our feelings. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, we're sensitive, sensitive nice, boys. Nice. And, uh, you know, words hurt people. You know you know who you are. Yep. No, uh, no it's been a pretty positive response, and we appreciate it. Um, any uh, Anything else? Uh we're working on some stuff in the future. Hopefully we'll have some new affordable prints of Keith's work available soon. Uh, there's some ready to hang stuff that you can get now if you check out his online store. Uh, you know, any support helps though. Just a simple like and a share uh, would mean the world to us. But uh, we appreciate you guys for watching, especially, like I said, these longer videos. Uh, we're going to do some shorter form stuff too. I've still got a small collection of older things to put out. Uh, if you haven't noticed, we're in a different location than usual. Uh, we'll be here for a little bit while we get the other studio space back up and running. And um, I can't think of anything else. But yeah, we'll be when Keith does his show, I'll be definitely down there filming. Uh, maybe not the whole thing, but uh, put together a little montage of where and what he's got going on there uh, and a couple other ideas for the future so thank you are we good yeah i think so all Are right done? thank you well, more or less yeah so i'm going to hold it still well slide slide your paints a little bit so you can put the, the drawing it came for the painting picture it came from in the frame at the same time oh okay so they can see both real quick so uh we get asked a lot if we could show what he's working from, and sometimes we can't just be. Uh, or my photos, and I don't like Keith enough to share. Um, <laughs> you know, so this was one where Keith took the photo himself, so he claims. Yeah. And uh, I, I even told a little story how the wonderful trip to uh, to. Uh, there but as you can see the, the colors aren't the same the the proportions are similar uh he takes a lot of liberties and you should as well we're not recreating the photo verbatim anyway uh the the layout used for the pencil sketch was probably the most impactful part of the original photo uh and second, I would guess, and Keith can correct me if I'm wrong, but it appears to just be like where shadows are laying uh, to get the depth. Everything else is kind of a liberty that he took of his own color yep. scheme wise and not putting in the, the, uh, the greenery that's at the very bottom of the photo and leaving it be a water. Yeah, as the artist, you get to, you get to decide what you're going to, uh, what you're gonna paint. So, all right, sir. I think we better get out of here. Can I say thank you and goodbye? You can. All right. Thanks and bye-bye, everybody. We'll we'll be back. Take care. <laughs>